in the last four decades, the cost of college has gone up 1,332%. Family income, not so much, 359%. This is one of the big reasons why student debt last year surpassed $1.5 trillion. Now, the debate over college prices tends to turn into a bit of a food fight. On the one side throws it at the greedy colleges, and the other side throws it right back at the ignorant politicians. But meanwhile, as one mom told me recently, the worst part about it is that you feel like there's always something you don't know, and that you're powerless to do anything about it. Well, in the last couple of years, the college admissions landscape has imploded, and now there's absolutely something you can do about it something that could actually bring down the cost of college. Because the problem isn't really about price, and the solution, it wouldn't cost us a dime. So in the 1980s, higher education stumbled on this old marketing idea called the Chivas Regal Effect. Yep, that's the company that put their whiskey into fancy bottles, jacked up the price, and watched sales take off. Turns out that in a marketplace where you can't tell the difference between brands, the public will often equate price with quality. Well, as soon as a few colleges tried this and saw applications go through the roof, a whole bunch of other colleges said, well, we're going to do that too. And what started out as a couple of schools trying to differentiate themselves with higher prices turned into this nationwide game of keep up with the Joneses. Now, a lot of schools figured out pretty quickly you know what, this new appetite for high prices is going to outpace what students can afford. But once you start justifying your price as a reflection of quality, you can't really say, well, just kidding. So <laughs> colleges figured out that what we'll have to do is we'll just have to increase the size of the financial aid we give out, keep the kids coming in, and maintain the illusion that the public will absolutely pay the price that we're charging. As a result, the sticker price and the actual price grew further and further apart. So between 1990 and 2018, sticker prices in today's dollars doubled. But the actual prices that students paid didn't jump nearly as much. And if you put it in today's dollars at public institutions or private institutions, over almost three decades, those actual prices went up less than $7,000. That's about 250 bucks a year. All right, so at this point, you have every right to be a little confused. After all, you read all the headlines about college prices going through the roof, and I'm standing here telling you, no, it didn't go up that much. All right, so journalists, public policymakers, academics, we like to zoom out, talk about the big picture, the overall, the averages, but the 40,000 foot view is a lot different than what's going on on the ground. And for individual students, it wasn't about the sticker price or the actual price. It was the way that both of those prices changed over time that made it so difficult to find a college you knew you could afford. So, in 1990, at private institutions, three out of four prices sat within an $8,500 range. At public institutions, they sat within about a $2,500 range, and you could tell that a private institution was going to be more expensive than a public institution. By 2018, not only had those two ranges converged, but now that range is a $33,000 spread. And for a lot of students, they could find a private institution that was less expensive than a public institution. Well, okay, so the good news is, if there is any, there's some low prices still out there. The bad news is, you're going to have to apply to all 4,500 colleges and universities to find them. Well, so the federal government's decided to try to bring some sanity to this mess by requiring every college to have on their website something called a net price calculator. The idea was you put in your academic information and your financial need information, and that little tool will pop out for you the price that you would be asked to pay at that school if you were accepted. Well, guess what? Colleges didn't like this idea too much, and their implementation efforts showed it. 
They either buried it on the web page so you couldn't find it, or they made it a really complicated, convoluted form so people quit halfway through. And accuracy, uh, well, results varied. You wouldn't have known that, but results varied. Even if the schools had embraced the net price calculator, it wouldn't have solved the core problem. Okay, if you're looking for a college and you can only pay up to a certain price, how do you ensure that you only look at schools you can afford? Well, let's walk through how this process works. You start with 4,500 colleges and universities, that's two-year and four-year schools all over the country, and you start to narrow your choices down by whatever cho variables you choose. If you're like some of the 17-year-olds I know, it's about who's got the best food. But anyway, you narrow your choices down to a small group, and that's the group you, you apply to, right? Now, if you got a lot of money, you can apply to a lot of schools because they're usually 50 bucks a pop. If you don't, you apply to a few, and then you wait. Eventually, you find out where you got accepted. That's when you find out your actual price. And a couple of weeks later, you're supposed to decide. OK, so what happens if you can't afford any of the prices you got? That's what's happening to many students today. It used to be that you didn't really have a choice because there's more students than there were spots in college. So you either borrow a bunch and hope for the best, or you bail on the whole idea of college. But a little thing shifted in the last couple of years that changes everything. In 2010, nationally, we graduated 3.5 million high school seniors. At the national level, that number stays flat for the next decade or so. And after a little bump, it drops off the table. But in the Midwest and the Northeast, the two regions of the country with the highest concentration of colleges and universities, that number starts to drop in 2011. And by 2030, each year, graduating 200,000 fewer high school seniors. Well, the colleges have already started to feel this pinch. The National Association of College Admissions Counselors puts out a list on May 1st of every year of the colleges that they know of that are still looking for students. In 2010, 210 schools showed up, or I'm sorry, 2013, 210 schools showed up on that list. By 2018, it was 422 schools. And last year, a survey of college business offices, a national survey, found that over half of all colleges and universities never made their enrollment goals. Well, this ought to mean something, right? This ought to mean that we have some power. Because if there's more seats in colleges than there are students to fill them, we ought to be able to shop around. Colleges have to wait for us to decide. What we need? Those actual prices. Guess what? They're not hidden in a vault somewhere. They're out in the open. They're scattered across the millions of award letters that students receive each year. You got a couple of prices. You got a couple of prices. I got a couple of prices. But right now, since I don't know what I don't know, I think that the sum total of my choices are sitting there in a couple of envelopes on the kitchen table. So how do we fix this? If we share the information we already have, we pull the curtain back on college pricing. All of a sudden, you can each find the full range of prices and you can use that information to your advantage. So how would this work? Well, you only really need to share three pieces of information. First, you need to have something that represents academic merit. That could be a test score, high school GPA. You need to have something that represents financial need. And that comes from everybody has to fill out this thing called the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, called the FAFSA. And at the end of that, you get what's called the Estimated Family Contribution, the EFC. That's a proxy for need. And then you just got to share letters that have the college's price and the college that gave it. With that information, we could organize all these prices so that you could see all the prices offered by other colleges to students just like you. Well, this tool could do a whole lot of other good. Because now, you don't have to apply to a college without knowing whether you could afford it or not. And for low-income students, 
who are already overwhelmed by the notion of applying to college, let alone figuring out how to pay for it, this suddenly takes all of the uncertainty away and allows them much better chance of going through that process and actually enrolling in college. It turns out that there are a lot of good colleges out there that most of us have never heard of. And it turns out that those schools also offer pretty good prices. Well, with this resource, those schools would gain a lot more attention. And maybe they become the exemplars of how a higher education institution should be run. And then, with all this transparency flying around, not too much, hold on. And then, you're going to have a few colleges that say, wait a minute, if we reduced our price just a little bit, we could compete for some more students. It's time for us to make college prices transparent. Higher education's bad at change. But they need us to keep the lights on. And frankly, today, we need each other more than ever. If there's one thing we know from decades of research on college students, it's that what you do in college matters far more than where you go. Price doesn't equal quality, it never did. If we can make college prices transparent, more students will be able to find a college they could afford. Fewer students end up deep in debt. More students know that their school is the right fit, and fewer students end up regretting their college choice. If we team up, we could start to bring down college prices. Thank you. <laughs>